discussed about yesterday, let's turn to the two and the two of what we did yesterday. I discussed MPEG 2, MPEG 4 SD, MPEG 4 HD, Android receiver, UHD receiver, FUHD receiver, and we talked about scram boot receiver, or free to hear. So one thing I want to make now to you, there are three ways you can search for C on your receiver. There are three ways. But let me give you four. Four ways you can search. But the first three are the most important one. The fourth one, because of the upgrade in technology, you don't really need it like that much. So number one, we have what we call manual search. In some receiver you see it, you say manual search. In some receiver you see it as manual scan. Either manual search or manual scan. In manual scan, you only have one single transponder per time. That is, you have the. What are the transponder duties? Number one, you have the frequency, transponder frequency. Number two, some transponder polarity. And number three, your transponder security. If it's the old decoders, you will need to put what? The FEC, that's for the operation. But in today's decoder, most of the new decoders that we have had will set the FCC by themselves. Hope you guys are with me. So if you are using a manual scan, it means you are only scanning what? How many transporters per time? One. Just one. In the old days when we used to do strong, that's what they normally input on your strong decoder. I hope by the time we are we are having our particular, you guys will be able to see how they work. That's what. And after scanning it, it's only the channels on that transponder that will come out. I get it. A single transponder might accommodate, I can't, I don't even know the but I know that it accommodates between 10 and more channels. And sometimes it can be lesser than that. I've seen some instances where a single transponder will have only one channel. And I've seen instances where it has more than that. Let me guys have it. <laughs> so when you are using manual search, in the olden days, we normally use that manual search to look for signal. And what you normally put on your meter is also what? Manual search. When you put that frequency, what are you doing? It's the manual manual search. The next one we have after the manual search, the manual scan, as the case may be, we have what we call the auto scan. Or auto search. You know, when you. Why you just activate it? Or you just buy it? There are some pre program transponders on the receiver. Especially if you are on the right satellite mode. Are you with me now? There are sometimes, most times, you have some transponder on it. So when you are using auto search or auto scan, it means you are only searching the transponders that are already available. You're only searching the transponders that are already available, either by the manufacturers or by the previous installers. So the installer can have some newer transponder now. So when you run auto scan, it will scan all transponders on that satellite that you have already do, uh, you have already what? You have already added to it. Okay. The manual scan is fastest followed by the auto scan which is a little bit slower than manual scan but you have access to more channel if there are more transponder and the third one now we now have what we call the blind scan we have the blind scan so in blind scan now it will scan all available transponder. The blind scan will scan all available ones, transponder on that position in the space. Like you have seen the signal now. What's in there now? Just now. And I do blind scan. All the transponder that is available at that place where the dish is facing, it will do what? To bring them out. That's number one. 
after bringing those transponders out, it will save it on your receiver. That's number two. It will now add all the channels to what to your receiver. That's number three. So it's fair. Is it what blind scan does is that it's like a blind person looking for something. You try to start it. Or after searching on, it will bring out the available transponder and put it on your receiver. So after putting it on your receiver. Save. It will save it on those transponder details. After saving those transponder details, it will now start searching for the channels on it. And it will now, after doing that, it will now save all the channels. So it search for the transponder, add the transponder, save the transponder, add the channel, and save the channel. That's one of the major reasons why blind scan normally takes longer time. Although, thank God for the new decoders that we have now, it doesn't take much like old decoders. And another disadvantage of that blind scan, if light goes off without your scan reaching 100%, you do what? You start all over again. If it doesn't get to 100 of 100, 100%, if light goes off and start, you start all over again. All over again. Okay. You know, in auto scan, you just scan and come out. If you start, what is already there, you're not adding any new one, any transponder, you just only bring out the child. And one funny thing is, in some incidents, you will notice that there are some channels there, especially those to flip the other And you now delete the transponders. The channels will be there, but you have deleted the transponders on the antenna setup. What do you think will happen? It's not sure at all. So what will you be writing? It's not sure. Scramble means it's a paid channel. No signal. No signal. Or no audio or no video. Are you guys? Can I, can I move on? The third one that we have, we have one called PID scan. PID scan. We have one called PID scan. On that PID, we have the VID, that's video identity. We have the AID, that's audio identity. We have the DID, that's data identity. Thank God for nowadays, you see guys that don't need to do it. In the fact, after you are sure of the transponder, each channel or each transponder has different PIDs. So, I'll give you an assignment. What is the full meaning of PID? I'm giving you that of audio video. What is the meaning of PID in PID scan? But today's receiver, you don't need those for all ID. You want to just scan. If you have already had those PID, AID, and all the ID. So, what is the full of Video. Data identity. Okay, If the signal is a data signal, meaning that there is no Video, no audio, only data, it's only a DID. If the channel, if the uh, transponder is only a radio, you know we also have radio on satellites, radio over satellites. It will have only what? A ID. But if it's a video, it will have both A, D, and V. We have the third. What if it is? I'm listening. If it is only, only audio, it will have AI. If it is a data service, meaning it's for internet, it will have D, D, D. But if it is a channel, a video channel, it will have both A, D, and D, ID. Can I move on? I'm waiting for those that are writing so that it's not be like I see my children.
So those are the information that you need for what for your receiver. When we get to dissect, let me quickly explain what we call dissect sensation. But when we explain more, when we get to dissect, uh, I told you yesterday now, digital satellite radio. So in dissect setup, we have 1.1 and we have 1.2. I told you that a dissect is the device that allow is like a protocol that allows you to use multiple dishes on a single receiver. That's why in some places you go to for few people that visited my dad house, you know that you have like four dishes, is it four or five? Dishes? And you have just two DSC and the When I was still young, I used to anytime I know that I, I have an information about like a new satellite comes out, I go and search it. I've got such in the So it allow a dissect allow multiple dishes, multiple positions and works on a single receiver. There's another device that we call scalar. We call it LMB scalar. LMB scalar is a device that you can put on your dish. And you can use multiple LMB on a single words dish. Although we don't normally encourage scalar like before. Do you know what? The moment there is a small shift in the old dish like this, all the signals go off. But you know if you're having two or three dishes, there's only one or two that will go off. Except village people are after you. Or the person has offended somebody. And you decide to go and check all the views of this. And you know that in the future, the more the satellite position that you are facing your dish. The more channels you have access to. You have a question. For the Skylar, what's the objective of using four LNBs or one? So that they can have up to four. So four different satellite positions. Four dishes, like no, just a single dish. You know, is it? Four LNBs. So you said you're buying four dishes. Yes, you can use it. But it has a degree of efficiency. The signal cannot be as full as one as using the standard dish. So I'm um, on something now. I said we have 1.1, that is like 1.1 and 1.2. Let me start from 1.1. 1.1 can accommodate from zero from one to four satellite position. One to four. In the olden days we have dissect there are only two way dissect. That's one and two. That's Later they introduce three way dissect. Here you can have one, two, three. Now let me now say something here. In some receivers, you do not see one, two, three. You see A, B, C, D. So A is corresponding to one. B is corresponding to two. C is corresponding to one. Three. And D is corresponding to four. Meaning that you can use four. What does that dissect do? Whenever you have your remote controls and you are changing from one satellite position, maybe you are on Nikonsat now and watching GVTV on Nikonsat. And it may feel like, let me watch press TV. I want to listen to the news of what is happening around. And I change to press TV or the Intersat 68 degrees. Instead of you removing the wire, at the back of what of your receiver, removing the wire from the first dish and putting the wire of here is the dissect that will do what that will switch between them. So how efficient the dissect is, how quick it can switch. Are you guys? Can I move on? You don't have dissect. 1.2. There's like 1.2 can accommodate up to 16 dishes. I used to have that of 16. I don't even know where I was. I'm so not here for that. I'm going to make my mind. I'll go down for it. And as well, my mind is, I will have further for it as part of the United States. Up to 16 dishes. Up to 16 so meaning that you have access up to 16 positions. Imagine you have 16 dishes. You want as many as... Eh? You have more. Especially if you are working with both Simba and Akira. 
You know, there was a time in the olden days when we are using simba, those big big simba. You know, they will put the motorizer on like this. You know, position one. Then at the dish, the moment you press motorizer, it's going to go to the front. So we we'll put it on that side. Position three. So if you are putting it on that side, there's uh, even some dice on that. And if you are putting it on that side, it's a show. So you understand where you can have system. So you can use in that one, you have one to sixteen. No battery. Under that set, you have what we call it the dish moving that you set. Dish moving that although so although that one is not popular, this dish moving dive set is a device that you add you attach it to the back of your dish. You locate the signal. After locating the signal, you must put the position. Then you select the move on your decoder. Either strong, Conan. The moment you are changing the channel, in this one you don't use multiple dishes, just a single dish. When you are changing the channel from maybe or you test at 36 degrees and you press, you now change it to Nikon Sat to 42.5 degree east. A dish moving dice will move the dish to my concert and activate the my concert to start working. So as it's moving the dish, it's also selecting the channel. The only major problem we have is that over time the bush or let me say the bushing and the bearings of that motorizer normally have problems with time. So that one you don't need to nail multiple dish. When you use that one, okay, it will move it to the next one. Move it to the next one. Move it to the next one. It's not as fast as using multiple dish. Not as fast as using multiple dish. So most time we have dish moving itself from one point one up to four. Later they launch that of eight. That can accommodate protocol of one point two. But it's not as common as the Can I move on? We have talked about this. What type of writing do I do? We now have. I'm, I'm now moving to programming of the receiver. In some nowadays receiver, before you, when you buy it, when you are trying to program it, it will ask you is it a single satellite or a multiple satellite? Then you select a single satellite. It means you can only take one. One single satellite position in this. You only use one. You have so even if you activate 1.1 dissect, it's not work. Because you put it on one single. Those that follow me upper sound society. We are seeing it where I change the single. But after you have not selected multi, you must also select what those supply that you want to work. In the olden days, all of them would be the 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 time. They want only those supply that will be working to be what to be available. So you can have other ones. As long as you are not using them, you just activate them. Only activate. So if I'm using only two dishes, how many? What would I select? Single, single or multiple? Single. I'll huh? select single. Two dishes. When I want to use two dishes, two dishes. I'll select multiple. And after selecting multiple, if I'm using two dishes, I'll just only select two satellites. Then I want to use If I'm using four dishes, what would I do? Is it single or multiple? Multiple. And how many satellites will I select now? If I'm not using only one single dish, is it single or multiple? Like single. How many satellites would I select? Hope you understand what I'm saying. So that's for the single and multiple. Next thing I will now talk about is we are still on the silver. We have some receivers that have what we call RF out. RF stands for what? Radio frequency. RF out. Can I move? 
in some receivers is already pre-programmed. You can't change it. The radio frequency. You know, radio frequency, especially in television broadcasting and home usage, means what? Between channel what? Channel 20 to 69. In the early days, we have what? Oh, NTA Oshobo is on channel what? 49 UHF. OSBC is on what? Channel 22. Sorry, 32. OSBC Iboku, is it still working? It's on channel 22. Oh, NTA Ife. Is NTA Ife still working? It's on channel 35. Jeff. Do you know the major reason I'm giving you this channel? If you're in Lagos, they have many channels. If you are putting RF out, you must ensure that you are not using the same frequency of any local station in that area. Or else you want you have what we call interference. Ogami. Receivers. You must ensure that they are all what? The RF out are on what? Different channels. And I always advise that you make sure that they have minimum of two. So if one the difference is so if one is on channel 21, the next one should be on what? 2 plus 21. 23. The next one after 23 should be what? 25. Provided that 25 is not available in that local environment. I find a lot of Uber. Are you guys getting what I'm saying? Yes, so in some receivers, the, you can't change it. It's already pre-configured. In other receivers, like the old DSC receivers, you can change the Zappa one and the Luan model. You can change it. The pre-configured one with it will be channel 63. So you can change it from 63 to other channel number. Hope you guys are following me. There are some receiver does, that doesn't have RF out. Any receiver that doesn't have RF out, it means you can't use the RF out. When we get to other components, I'll now explain what you now use. You, you know, you can have some client that will tell you that I want to be watching it in my own. What they are watching this is, you know, I want to be watching in my first room, second room, and third room. That we call extension. When we get extension, I'll talk about that. We also have what we call AV out. We already know AV out. And in the early days, we also do what we call AV extension. When you get extension, I talk about it. So, each of you who is watching it today, we also have HDMI out. And we also have it. There was a client that came from a country I don't want to mention. I know in Africa. So, we have the. The installer have already run RF extension. But when it came around, he discovered that that RF is not as sharp as what he wants to do. It's not as sharp as what he wants to do. So he now said we should do HDMI extension. So each of the room will maintain what? The same HD quality. When we get to extension, Talk about that. Can I move on? Do you have any question on receivers? Some receivers we always have their PS house. Meaning they are power supply, like the latest DST. Say that if the power born, you can easily do what? Buy another one and change it, replace it, or repair it. Those ones that have inbuilt, some of the time it might affect the panel, some of the time. The main reason why they separate that powerhouse is that if the power is having a problem, you should have a downtime for the receiver, especially pay TV. And they know that having a downtime is not good for them because they will not be making money from you. So they want it to be as fast as possible for you to be able to replace it. So that you can continue your viewing. So it's only when the internal component has serious problems. That's when you have down time. Can I move on now? So I've discussed everything I want to discuss on this. If you have any questions on this, I can listen.
In the absence of no question, we have one called the RC. That's the remote control unit. And everybody knows what you use for remote control. You need mm -hmm. to operate your receiver at a distance. And most of the time, at this point, you want to program your receiver. You must have the remote control. The next one we, we have already discussed that one. we have what we call the PSU. PSU stands for what? Power supply unit. That's the charger. But under PSU, I will say some things. You must ensure that the ratings of your PSU is the same with the rating of the decoder or your receiver. You know, in some instances, you see some receivers, they will put 12 volt, 1.5 amps. If that receiver gets poor, what should you use to replace it? 12 volt, 1.5 amps. If you're not going to replace it with 12 volt, 2.5, it should work. But that decoder will not last. Because you are, giving, you are sending out more amps than what you need. And in some instances, there are some receivers in the past from what it is, that they are 12 volt, 2 amps. If you want to replace it, you must replace it with 12 volt 2 amps. The same multi that have 12 volt 1.5 also have 12 volt 2 amps. One thing you will notice when you are supplying under current, under power, your receiver, after some time, the receiver will start. It will be starting itself. After some time, it will be starting itself. When you start experiencing that, it might be a result of the PS. Sometimes it might even be losing the signal and the signal will be coming back. Although it's not only the PSU that causes that of the signal, but the PSU can be part of what is making your receiver to lose what signals as well. Can I move on? Then we have our visual cables. Under the visual cables, what are the cables that we have as our visual cables? We have the AV, HDMI, and VGA, and video components. AV, video components. HDMI and what? VGA. Mostly video component and VGA as what? Mostly as in this country. I thought you mentioned ACK HDMI to the last I'm still coming. They have not yet introduced that one in Nigeria. By the time we start having ultra high definition receiver in Nigeria, we introduce, just as study that one. It's not yet available. We have what? ACK HDMI that can transmit UHD. Signals. The, the, the mount of the app HDMI, is it the same type of mount? It's HDMI? almost the same. If you put my HDMI there, it will work. Because I saw it that it was described on the post HDMI, 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 but it's the same. Thing. It looks the same, but the numbers, the configuration is a little different. And the speed of data in the cable is also worse. It's also faster. Then for audio, you have your AV and your optical cable. Especially most DSTV recorders have optical cable, which you can connect to your server. So when your girlfriend comes, or the girlfriend of your client comes, you know, like somebody was saying yesterday that he bought a, a, an earpiece and was listening to music. And as they were beating, the sound was changing. He was thinking that the earpiece are spoiled. But it was the way they, what, they mixed the beat. So you want to maintain the same fidelity as the same way to and it's not expensive. Can I move on from there? Then you have your monitor or your TV screen. In Africa, particularly in Nigeria, the two types, the two formats we use is one, PAL and Auto. PAL and Auto. Meaning that if they bring a receiver from outside Nigeria, although HDMI, thank God for HDMI now, this switches itself. If it is, I remember one of my friends brought, brought a TV from Malaysia. And the TV is second. You know, we have second, we have NTSC, and the TV was showing black and white. TV of over two million was showing black and white. He was planning to buy normal DSTV then, AV. It's because of that it's bought and DSTV required that was what? That's HDMI. What you guys are yes, So the one we use in the guys power and auto. Anything outside that 
Then the, the voice format also. In the voice format, we have the I and V. In some, that's why in some receivers, you notice. 30 minutes. We have 